Welcome back everybody. In this video we're given two subgroups of a group G with a specified subgroup H. So there's G, there's H, and we're given these two subgroups. One is the normalizer of H and one is the centralizer. So things in the normalizer, well they're just group elements which satisfy a condition. Namely, uh, they're, when you conjugate H by that group element, you get back H. And the centralizer, well, it's a lot like the normalizer, only it's when you conjugate the elements of H, you get back the same element of H. Alternatively, you could say this means the GH equals HG for all H and H. And, well, it's reasonably clear that if something centralizes H, that means if you conjugate each element and you get back the same element, then when you conjugate H as a whole, you must get back H as a whole. So the centralizer of H is a subgroup of the normalizer. This question is about showing that it's even a normal subgroup. Right? The centralizer is normal in the normalizer. So how do we do that? Well, to show something is normal, we can show that it's invariant under conjugation. So let me take an element from the normalizer of H and conjugate the centralizer by it. Right? Well, in fact, what I'll do is I'll take an element of the centralizer. So how about we call it, I don't know, how about C for centralizer? So I'll take some little C which centralizes H. And I want to show that if I conjugate little c by x, I want this to again be in the centralizer. Okay? That's what it would mean to show that a subgroup is normal in a larger group, right? You take an arbitrary element of the subgroup, that's my little c, and then I take an arbitrary element of the larger group, that's my x, and I conjugate c by that x. Okay, well, to determine whether or not this is in the centralizer of h, I need to check the condition to be in the centralizer of h. Okay, well, what was that condition? Well, it's up here. The condition to be in the centralizer of h is that if you conjugate any element of H by that given element, you get back the exact same element of H. So I need to take an element of H, so let's call that little h, and I need to conjugate it by this element, x, c, x inverse. Okay, so if H is an H, then we have x, c, x inverse, H, and then x, c, x inverse, inverse. Okay, so I'm conjugating a little h. And let's see. So first, I'll expand this inverse. I get x, c, x inverse, h. And then when I expand, well, you're, you're inverting a product, so you reverse the order and then invert everything. And so I'll end up with x, c inverse, x inverse. Okay, now let me reassociate. And I'll get here my x, c and then I'm going to put x inverse h, x in the middle. And then I'll have a c inverse, x inverse. Now what do I know about this x inverse h, x? Well, where did x come from? x came from the normalizer. Of course, if x is the normalizer, so is its inverse. So what I'm really doing here is taking this little h and conjugating it by x inverse. But x normalizes h. So whatever this element is, it's some element of h. Okay, I get some element of h. Now, next step, let me associate the c around these, this x inverse hx. So I'm taking this element of h, x inverse hx, and I'm conjugating it with little c. But c came from the centralizer. C centralizes H, which means when I conjugate anything in H, in particular this X inverse HX, I get back the same element. So I can just drop the C's. So I get X and then X inverse HX, X inverse. Okay, one last couple of reassociations. Put the X and the X inverse next to each other. And I see those are going to cancel, and I'm left with just H. Okay, so that means that I took this element, x, c, x inverse, I conjugated h by it, and I got back little h. 
And therefore, we conclude that x, c, x inverse centralizes h. And therefore, since we took an arbitrary element of the centralizer, we conjugate it by an arbitrary element of the normalizer, the centralizer is a normal subgroup of the normalizer.